What's up everybody, Paul Carl here. Today, I'm gonna to show you where Card Cobra is at. Watch this. I scanned in these cards, they're ready to go. There are 29. I'm gonna say 34.99 shipped for these guys. And uh, I'm selling these for a client on consignment. I like to do not for sale, so I know I've listed them, and I'm gonna export them. Now I'm gonna open up Card Cobra and I'm gonna create player lots. There's 29 cards. It's doing its thing. And what this is doing right now is it's crafting the perfect eBay listing for these cards. It's listing out every card that the AI identified in the description. It's plugging in your custom like shipping policy, return policy. It's estimating the weight of the package so it can fill those in for you. It's putting in all of the team item specifics, the card number item specifics, numbers of cards, parallels and varieties, rookies, anything you can think of. It's doing it behind the scenes and it's automatically building the images. And it's done. All right. And it uploaded them all for me too. So now all I got to do is come here, refresh, make sure it's still active. Click this, choose file my eBay upload, and I'll go through this slower at, after this. I just wanted to show you guys how amazing this is. All right, let's see. Refresh, are you done yet? There we go. All right, now we're coming to schedule listings. You can toggle on and off whether or not you want your listings to be scheduled. Um, I like to schedule them so that I can push them live at peak traffic hours on eBay, so that way I get the most eyeballs when it's a new listing. But anyways, look at these images. We'll, we'll look at the live listing next, but look at it. It made all these automatically. Every single card in the lot, you can see front and back scans. And look at the title here. 80 out of 80 characters. The software is trying to put every single keyword it possibly can into the title and like reduce and expand things so that things fit. So like let's say Orlando Magic couldn't fit. It, it'll just do magic if there's something that's a higher priority. Like maybe there's an autographed card in here. Autograph gets priority over team. So it would cut down Orlando magic to just magic and put autograph there. And there's also a neat little feature I hid in there called the nickname detector. Since we listed Shaquille O'Neal, which I totally picked by coincidence, uh, it detected that Oh, Shaquille O'Neal, people will search for Shaq. So we're going to put Shaq in the title too, because if we just put Shaquille O'Neal, our listing's pretty much invisible to anybody who searches Shaq lot. It automatically creates the custom label. This, so this, this is based on the chrono card skew, where your boxes are actually stored. And since some people do use the um, this full skew here and rename their boxes, you can either use the simplified version, which I'm using, or you can do the full version, which will put this entire skew into your custom label for you. Um, you can put your own custom whatever. It's so like if you sell on consignment also, you can put who owns the cards here. You can put, you know, what collection you bought it from, whatever you want. And then lastly, it adds the date automatically so that you know how long you've been trying to sell this card. Now you can see it also automatically categorized it into my store. Sport, season, year manufactured, every, every detail, number of cards, features, it's only base set. I could have actually made this... Uh, put insert in here too because what you can do actually is if, if I was thinking instead of being so excited if I put insert here it would have automatically put that in the specifics it will detect inserts automatically when it can but I don't have every single product in the insert set in the software not yet at least um, so let's see oh, I should add I should make this add automatically too um, anyway standard it has all the teams detected Let's see, no autograph, so that, no, that's there. It's not vintage, it'll automatically select vintage if it's vintage. Comes up with a card name, card number, does everything. And then here, puts in this boilerplate, pulls in the condition, gives you a link to the eBay card condition guidelines, has all my shipping stuff, including this wonderful typo I should fix in my, <laughs> in my settings. Um, and then here's the list of all the cards. It has this AI disclaimer here because I didn't check and verify every card in here. I just did this quickly. If you are a perfectionist and if it's a lot that's, let's say, a lot higher value, you might want to check every single card and make sure that it's accurate. And if you do that, you can toggle off this AI disclaimer so that it won't show it there. It'll just show the list of cards. We got the price, offers, I'm going to turn the schedule off. I'm going to turn offers on for this one. 
Um, but yeah, here you can see it estimates it's going to weigh about nine ounces and it pulls in package dimensions of the box that I use. Um, eventually I'll add settings so that you can put in your own package dimensions so you don't have to potentially change this. But yeah, it does all this automatically. You don't have to do anything but click the button and yeah, we'll revise this and look at it live on eBay. So we can see these pictures. Let's, let's blow them up. They're high res, so even on the main image, you can really get a good feel of what the condition's like. But if that's too small, you can get even more detail when you go through each of these other images. And these are all created automatically. You can kind of see this faint background, these faint lines around the cards. They're not in penny sleeves. I, um, I set my brand color to be roughly the same color as my scanner background so that it all matches and makes kind of the same consistent white surface. But you can also set this background color, color to be whatever you want. It looks really good with a black, black background on scans. If you do black on your scans and then do a black background, these things look gorgeous. But unfortunately, I couldn't figure out how to get my scanner to do the black background in, in Chrono Card just only on its own. Uh, but that's besides the point. Anyways, you can see it's, it's awesome. And then you just have this by itself because there weren't any others in that lot. I'm, I want to fine tune this because in cir circumstances like this where there's only one card, I would much rather this card take up the whole image. But those are down the road improvements. Anyways, let's get into some more examples here. I got, so we did this one off lot. Um, I have another player lot here. This is with 97 cards. Um, and I don't know, what do we charge for Andre here? I think we'll do $34.99. These are for someone else. <laughs> Sell a lot of cards for a lot of random people. I'm just going to go ahead and turn them all to Andre Dawson here. And the thing you have to remember, I'm going to go slowly now and, and kind of explain the software and how to use it. This is the export directory. So you have a setting in Card Cobra where you set your export directory. And every time you run the tool after you export there, you want to delete everything so that it doesn't run twice and redo everything. Because you, you don't want to list the same lot twice. So I'm going to export this. And that's a 97 card lot. And, that, and that's the beauty of it now. Previously, what would have to be done is you'd have to count out like to 100 or whatever supported size there was and you'd have to count the cards out make sure you have enough maybe rearrange them or whatever but now it you it doesn't matter how many there are you can just scan them all and if you're short three cards it doesn't matter because every single lot size is supported now this is the game changer if you get a five row box of player sorted cards from maybe you buy out a deal or you buy a collection you can literally take all those cards and just scan the five row box. That takes what, maybe an hour-ish, something around there. And then you're basically done. All the easy stuff is just pushing the buttons here, doing the exports. You can list that whole five row box of cards as lots in under two hours. Anyway, that's finished. Let's, um, let's pull that up. I'm gonna go ahead and upload this template too. Alright, nope, not orders. We want scheduled listings. So here it is again. And uh, yeah, let's just pull it up again and see. All the cards got the same skew. All 80 characters used again. What what the previous version would do really well is optimize the title to use all the most important characters. And um, if some things were too long, it would try to like shorten them intelligently. And what would happen is sometimes when they were shortened, there would be a lot of extra characters. So like, let's say it's Panini Prism draft picks and it shortens that to like Panini Prism. You still might have like 10 characters left over that could be filled with another keyword. Uh, so this new version is very smart about utilizing that extra space and putting in more keywords. Let me see, all the stuff is here. We got the lot. There's also a feature, I'll have to show it on mobile, but there's a mobile like short description. I'll show you some code here. In the HTML code, this is schema markup. And what this does is it allows eBay's app to show just this short description so that people kind of see like a blurb about the 
the item's description without actually clicking into it. And up oh, here, here we go again. <laughs> I forgot that, about that typo. Uh, but yeah, everything is, it's great. It estimates this one's going to be 13 ounces, which is probably pretty close. I think it'll probably be 12 once it's all packed up. One one new feature that I think everybody will love is the scroll wheel <laughs> now works on the settings tab. But you can see here that you, we have eBay.com and eBay Canada is also supported. Um, you can turn your schedule listings on and off. You choose your shipping policies here. You choose your return policies. It is all intelligently assigning the policies based on what you're listing so if you're listing a lot of cards up to 12 cards it will put them in the ebay standard envelope shipping policy if you're listing a single card that's under 20 dollars, it will put it in ebay standard envelope if you're doing a more expensive card or like a slab it'll automatically put it into your um, ground advantage shipping even if it's like let's say it's a five dollar slab and you charge shipping it'll put it in your um, ga shipping for you automatically you can set an auction shipping policy that will be used for when you auction cards. This is optional here. You can leave these blank if you want. If, you, if you're listing to multiple stores, you have to leave it blank because your store category IDs are going to be different across the stores. Unless you really want to like go above and beyond and like copy and paste them in here. Uh, but you can leave these blank if you don't use these store categories. Best offer threshold. So $5 is mine. So if it's more than $5, it'll turn best offer on. This is where you turn the AI disclaimer on or off and you can type in your custom uh, parts for your descriptions. You can use HTML here. Um, and where where's that listing? Where's my typo? Well, I was gonna fix my typo, but I couldn't find it. And uh, here you put your brand color for what you want the background to be. But that's what you do here. Oh, and this AI disclaimer only appears for lots. It will not appear for your singles because we should all be checking our singles. You always go ahead and save those. The custom lot, because of the way the titles are generated now, uh, the custom lot doesn't work anymore. So you can't just type in your own title. <laughs> That'll be something I bring back later on, just because of the, the way the technology is behind the scenes now. Doesn't play well with custom lot yet, but it, I think it'll be an easy fix. So the next thing I gotta do here now is delete all these. All right, I showed these ones individually because they were unique lot sizes. So when you're scanning a group of cards and you don't know how many are there, you just do it on their own put them in their own scan group it'll make it easier to manage but if you're curating some lots of like player lots or set lots or whatever and they're all going to have the same number of cards do it all in one scan group because what you can do now that you couldn't do previously is export this entire sheet um, in the last version i almost wanted to give up because i had to export each lot ind independently but now you can do the whole thing all at once the only thing you have to double check here is it is worth double checking the AI just for the names at least to make sure the names are correct. And then for special characters like this, like the little accent on Acuna, if I'm pronouncing his name right, sorry. Um, you, you don't want to have any extra commas or any special characters like that. That will break the thing and you'll have to redo it. Uh, you'll have to rerun it after you find the error and fix it. So it's nice to just come through here and fix that. I'm using control C and control V for copy and paste and you can also navigate with your arrow keys like an Excel spreadsheet so here I found some more I'm just gonna paste that everything looks good some of these are rookies this is indeed a rookie this is a rookie and this is critical information uh, because that rookie check mark will include that in the title for the lot and here I just made everything 399 you can set the prices individually on the first card in the lot. So these are not necessary. I don't need to have those there, but it doesn't hurt. Um, the reason why those are there, though, is because I typed... Let me just delete everything. I'll show you. So I'm going to hit delete. I'm just putting... Oops, no, no, no. Not $39.99. I'll never sell one. <laughs> so I just put $3.99 there. You can copy and select all and paste. You can also copy... Let me just delete that again. You can also do 399. Oops. And you can click this, right click, and do that. And you can also change it and set prices individually depending on what the lot is. It's all up to your preference for that. Anyways, these are all my cards. So I'm just going to do the SKU I use for my cards and put that in there. Same way. Something else that is useful to know is um, if you press the everything. 
actually, let me slow down. All the cards right now have to be vertical, so you, you can't do this, unfortunately. That might happen in a future version, it's just, it really throws off the math behind the creation of the lots. Um, but some hotkeys that you can use to help if you scan sideways, for example, F5 and F6, rotate your card, the first card, right and left. F7 and F8, rotate the other, the back of the card. So what you can do is you can actually navigate around and rotate your images without having to click up here and then click back here. That's a really useful trick. Another trick you can use is the F2 key takes you to the last it brings your cursor to the last um, spot of that row. So let's say this this isn't gold. I want to delete just gold. Instead of double clicking and trying to get here and highlight or whatever, you can just you can navigate up with the arrows or type, press F2, delete, delete, done. And then I guess I gotta click off because they're autofill. There's gotta be a hotkey to get rid of the autofill. Maybe it's escape. Let's see. Yeah, it's escape. <laughs> All right. Anyway, all right, enough talking about that. We got an empty directory. Again, always check this. I'm gonna export all these cards. Close, close, close. And now I'm going to run Card Cobra, create player lots, three cards per lot, create the listings, and it's gonna go through and do this all. Another cool feature that I added is this, you can see that it says it's uploading the images to AWS. It's doing that in real time as it goes through each lot and that's important because in previous versions i had to do upload the images all at the end so you'd have to wait a while it would say it was finished but the images were still uploading in the background and uh, this way when it says it's finished you know it's really finished all of the data processing for the for the lots and building the images is pretty much instant I did see a little bit of lag time with larger lots because I tested like 600 cards just to see what it would do. Um, so that takes a couple seconds, but for smaller lots like these, it's the images are edited in less than a second. It's literally milliseconds. The uploading is what takes the bulk of the time. So if you're doing this, you're uploading, what, what I would recommend doing while this is running, start scanning in more cards or start shipping an order or do something else while this works. Don't just sit here and stare at it like I am right now. <laughs> all right, last card. So this is all done. I'm gonna go ahead and open eBay back up. We're gonna go to our, this is the uploads tab under reports. So you need to go to your seller hub. You have all your tabs up here. There is a listings upload. That's a tricky one. That's just there to fool you. <laughs> you wanna to go to reports and uploads. That's gonna bring you here, either reports or uploads. You can click either one. And then number three, upload template, choose file. And we'll upload this and it's gonna create all the listings. And we're done. We'll go to scheduled here. Now you can see all these three card lot listings just automatically created. Let's see, it included A-Rod is the nickname because there was space. You'll, you'll also notice here, the, the lots that were checked off is rookie. It's not just a normal lot, it's a rookie lot now. It's, man, I'm so proud of this thing. Uh, but yeah, so I'll show you something else that I like to do. For a lot of my lots, I try to reschedule them to go live at 7 a.m. Mountain Time or 7 p.m. Mountain Time. So I'm gonna change all these to 7 p.m or wait, no, 6 p.m. Pacific is 7 p.m. Mountain Time. So I'm gonna go ahead and reschedule these for that. This is the main reason why I like to schedule them. And then I can kind of look at them before they all go off into the world. I can see them. <laughs> but yeah, look at all the titles. You can see they're all pushing that 80 character limit. It's all using all these extra keywords, as many as possible, to maximize search volume maximize traffic and eyeballs and impressions all that good stuff so that's it for this quick demo um i'm working on doing documentation so there will be video guides and written guides on how everything works everything from the chrono card side of things to the card cobra side of things and then just you know some general best practices that i find work for me what i've learned is a lot of people using it right now are using it in slightly different ways and it's really cool that it has that flexibility but yeah, thank you to everybody who took advantage of the 
the wait list and getting in early for that lo locked in uh, price. That was really cool. I'm r really appreciative that that you guys did that because it gave me the <laughs> the motivation to keep grinding it out and do some of these huge updates that just finished. Um, for anybody who wants to sign up and start using Card Cobra, first I want to say who it's for because it's for a very specific segment of the sports card market. This is for larger sellers. This is for people who, you know, you probably have like the top plan on Card Dealer Pro. You probably have, you know, a couple premium stores or an anchor store with Chrono Card. Um, you have a lot of cards that you're trying to sell. And that that's the person, the, the target market that I'm going after. Um, for example, like there's been some people who have, you know, a store and they have employees and they have multiple scanning and listing stations. So they're paying Chrono Card, you know, several several hundred to thousands of dollars per month for all of their subscriptions for all their computers and all of their ebay accounts card cobra eliminates that need and allows you to just crank out as many listings as you want in any format that you want for whatever store you want it, it simplifies the entire process simplifies the infrastructure and ultimately it's a better product too in terms of the listings that it creates and the revenue and profit per hour that it generates for us uh, so that's the type of person that I'm really looking for when I'm selling this. Um, but if if you're if you're like me and you do it on the side, but you've grown a huge store, you, you know what you're doing, you have like some good goals, you know your numbers, and you want to make it work, um, let me know, and I'd be happy to to onboard you too. Um, but the price is three hundred dollars a month. Um, it's gonna go up after I hit my first hundred customers. It's going up, um, <laughs> cause one problem with this, <laughs> the problem with making awesome software like this, is it's like with uh, Chrono Card or Card Dealer Pro. Once everybody has it, it's not really a competitive advantage anymore. So I, I ideally would like to have you know, probably less than a thousand customers or so um with this software so that we can just kind of be like the elite few <laughs> while everybody else is taking the pictures with their phone and they're they're flipping over each individual card and they gotta arrange it and do this and that <laughs> uh yeah um but anyways i'm just ranting now um thanks again to everybody and if you have any questions drop them in the comments i'm going to make more videos f for like guides and demos but i'm i'm thinking i might either make them private or just put them on a separate channel. I don't know. I don't want to spam this channel with Card Cobra stuff because I want to keep talking about all the other <laughs> nerdy stuff that I talk about. Um, but yeah, for now, it's kind of a hybrid, but the, the demos and, and the guides and how-tos will be a separate channel, I think, or, or private videos that have links to them, but whatever. Okay, now I'm really ranting. <laughs> have a good one, guys.